Hello everybody, I want to talk to you straight up and very serious. My name is Brian Logan. I've been in the wrestling business for 16 years and there's a lot of controversy around me and I'm no stranger to controversy. I'm going to get to that here in a minute. I won the AWA World Heavyweight Championship in April in Fayetteville, West Virginia from Larry Zabisco, the recognized AWA World Champion at that time for Dale Gagne, Gardner, Gagner, Federation out of Minneapolis. For two years, I worked in the office of the AWA. I was the talent coordinator. I was also the senior event coordinator. My job was to take care of all the talent and book most of the shows that we did. At that time when we started out, we had 30 territories, but one by one, they fell by the wayside. Now we have branched off and we have a new AWA. Well, Del Gagne doesn't like that, and I'm going to tell you, fans, why Del Gagne doesn't like that. Number one, he couldn't keep anybody in his AWA because of promises. He would promise some title changes. He would promise some money. He would promise some events that never showed. Guys like Johnny Glitter from the World Star Wrestling Federation, the guys from Maine up there in North Atlantic, my company, AWA Apex, and then the Mountaineer Wrestling Association, we all work together to try to exchange talent, to try to better our areas, to try to turn a profit in an industry that it's very hard to do that nowadays and we were very successful. However, you have other promoters like Linda Bade in Hawaii who tried her level best to cooperate with Del Gagne along with Nakamura-san from Japan in Zero One who all they did was, was try to get Carino to work hard and Carino all he did was was politic to get himself some belts and a couple of $500 payoffs and all of his buddies down there. Well that didn't help the industry, it helped his wallet. And you know what, that's not Linda Bates' fault or Nakamura-san's fault. You also have the Duke Championship Wrestling out of Canada where Del Gagne personally promised them a championship belt, took their money and didn't deliver and then turned right around and told them that because they couldn't speak English because they're French Canadian, that they misunderstood what was being said. He went on to then tell guys around the country to show up at events that were nowhere near there. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about driving two or three hours like everybody's done to further their career. I'm talking about flying halfway around the world to be told, go to Wisconsin, we go to San Francisco and show up and I'll get you X amount of dollars and I'll give you a hotel room. And they got there. Not only did they not have food to eat, no payday, they didn't even have a place to stay. And when they called their promoters that got them booked and it was in cahoots with Del Gagne, they had nobody to answer the phone. Now, I remember before the internet, when this used to be a business for, we were brothers, we were supposed to be family, we were supposed to be a fraternity. Well, that's not like that anymore, and I understand that, but that wasn't the goal of these promoters. Now, they've all got together, the ones that want to work together, and they formed their own AWA, along with Championship Wrestling out of East Tennessee, and they've already started to, to surpass the old AWA. They've already started to to exchange talent, to better their areas, get the word out more, instead of pushing Steve Carino and Ricky Landell, who, you know what, Steve, uh, you know what, we're buddies, but you know what, you're a suck-ass. You're a suck-ass and you're not, you, you, all you worry about is being politically correct. Well, you know what, I'm not politically correct, never have been, and some people might say I'm not mentally stable. You know what, if this gets you hot, then it gets you hot. And Ricky Landell, you know what, if you wasn't in cahoots or if you wasn't Let's just face it, if you wasn't just sniffing the ass of Steve Carino, you would have never been there. And speaking of that, let's talk about Jody Peterman. Jody Peterman, you don't even have a federation or a company in Georgia. One of your buddies does because of your wife. Your wife won't, take, won't stop taking money from you because if she catches you in wrestling, she's going to take all your money that you supposedly have. You know, you sat in a board meeting and you said you lost $75,000 in professional wrestling. Well, you know what, if I had $75,000, I wouldn't be in professional wrestling. I'd be sitting on a beach in Cancun somewhere with my wife or somebody else's wife. But you know what, you go off and you go down there and you have these little shows so you can have this little mistress. Well, you know what, that's fine, that's your business. It's none of Brian Logan's business what you do. But don't try to tell me to drive six hours to defend a belt without a contract when I know good and well that there was a contract for every single world heavyweight champion from 2005 until 2008. 
You wanted me to go down there and take a post-dated check, which I don't know if that's even legal, but you would know better than I am because you're a lawyer. And you wanted me to drive, well, let me tell you something. I've been in this business 16 years, and I've been lucky enough to start with Smoky Mountain Wrestling. I've wrestled for USWA. I got a small run uh, on WWE. I got a small run with OVW. And you know what I was lucky to have, it, and I've never, ever, ever in my career been asked to drive somewhere for free that was a good nine hours, especially to go down there and do something that didn't make any sense to begin with. But you know what, Dale Gandhi, you want to make threats? That's fine. That's fine. That's why I have a lawyer. Make threats. You know what? What we're doing is we're furthering the business. We're not furthering your pocket. And you know, there's something I want to talk about. Personal lives... I got in trouble, I smacked a woman, you can go to YouTube, you can Google it, you can find out. I, I smacked a woman, I went to prison. I've never hid that fact, and I don't hide that fact. Let's talk about being in a bar in Charleston, West Virginia one night, when you looked straight at me in the eye and told me your persuasion. Now, I don't care what your persuasion is, and it doesn't make any, it's not my business or anybody's business. I'm an equal opportunist. But let's talk about the guys who didn't get to have title reigns because they're not pretty boys from Florida. They're not uh, good looking enough because uh, their bodies aren't exactly what you call marketable. Well, you know what, I guess it's your company and you can market anybody you want and that's just fine. But let's just talk about uh, where were they really being marketed? Were they being marketed in the ring or were they being marketed in the hotel somewhere later? And I'll tell you what, I take this very seriously. I take a world championship. See, when I grew up, world champions meant something. You know what, they went, they went to a town, they wrestled, they had the best match on the car, they got paid, and they went home and they did it again. Men like Harley Race, men that I've had the pleasure to wrestle for. Men like Ric Flair, who I had the pleasure to be in his, his just general area. You know what, it's not like that anymore, and it's not like that because of slimeball promoters. And I take this very, very seriously, and I'm bringing back wrestling. Now they say you can't do that because of the internet and the industry's entertainment. Well, you know what, I'm in those arenas every single night. I'm the ones that see those fans. I don't sit at home and I don't go and I don't work at Walmart or I don't work at a cellular phone place. What I do is, is I get in the car and I go somewhere and wrestle. It's the only job I've ever had. It's the only job I'll ever know. It's the only one I'll ever have. And I go there and I go to places like East Tennessee and I go to Parkersburg, West Virginia and I go to Durham, Connecticut and I go to Honolulu, Hawaii and I wrestle and I do the best I can. And the fans either love me or they hate me. But the thing is, they can never say Brian Logan ever had a bad match because I give them their money's worth. And getting to that, you know what? There's a lot of, a lot of terms bandied around in professional wrestling. You know, you have your entertainment champions. You have your action champions. And you have your traditional champions. Well, I'm going to be a wrestling champion. This belt says wrestling. So I'm going to send it straight out as a shoot. I, don't, I got my career's been reborn after getting out of prison. So I'm sending out a straight shoot. I'm calling out Triple H or Randy Orton. Let me tell you something. Triple H, I have all the respect in the world for you. You deserve everything you got. And you know what? You are the man. No doubt in my, in my mind. Randy Orton, you're a great competitor. I know because when you were breaking in, your 15th match was with me. And your daddy came to me and said, please take care of my boy. And I did. And now he's a star. And you know what? You got guys like Samoa Joe, who's a great, great shooter. And you got The Undertaker, who is the biggest icon in wrestling history. But you know what? They only wrestle for who they wrestle for. I'm going to give you a chance, anybody in the world, whether it's some kid breaking in that weighs 106 pounds and his dream is to one time wrestle in front of his home crowd. To, be, to wrestle a world heavyweight champion, or whether by some grace of God, Vince McMahon sees this and gives me a job and puts me in Madison Square Garden. Get, it, get real close and listen to me. A straight up shoot, whether it's any world champion in the entire world, MMA, whether it's WWE, TNA, it doesn't matter because I got a reputation and it's not just mine. It's the wrestling industry's reputation. You know what? I'm sick and tired of the internet. I'm sick and tired of people telling me the business is dead. Well, you tell the people in East Tennessee that the business is dead. You tell the people in Oak Hill, West Virginia, it's dead. You tell the people that all their entertainment they have is to spend that five or ten dollars and come and see wrestling because it makes them feel good. You tell them that. You tell them corporate America doesn't care about them. Well, I'll tell you, Brian Logan cares about them, and it doesn't matter. I'm going to defend my honor, and you know what? There's a term, and I'm going to end it on this term, that a great man, Luthez, used to say, money marbles or chalk. 
And it used to mean something. It used to mean it's time for a fight. It's time to put up or shut up. Well, I'm saying, boys, I'm calling out the entire wrestling industry. Money marbles are chalk and a straight-up shoot. I am the best in the world today. Book me, put me in a match, and we'll see.